Right, hello everybody and welcome again to one of my little live sessions uh, here on YouTube for a change. I know, I'm kind of working between YouTube, Instagram and Facebook at the moment. So if you want to see more of this, stay tuned for later on. And you can obviously pop to the um, either Instagram or Facebook page where I'm going to continue with the uh, with this ran. Now, I'm working all the detail. I've got the background washers on, got the eye on, got the, the beak on, which I did on Instagram. Again, if you want to see that, it's on Instagram for just 24 hours as in today, so you need to kind of catch up on that if you can. Um, so I've got those in, so now I want to start working on the details. So what I'm going to show you through this little video is how I'm going to start and gradually build with layers of detail to create some very fine and fluffy looking feathers. Okay, but the first thing we need to do is I just want to say a little bit, just a little bit if you don't mind hanging on, about my Patreon channel where we can paint this together if need be, although it's something very similar. So one second. So let me tell you a little bit about patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. There's currently over 80 hours of video tuition for you. There's also tips and tricks videos, full length art videos, a PDF document which will go with that video, the outline drawing, the reference photograph, but most of all let me show you all my techniques from my 40 years of painting wildlife. For the $10 level you get access to all of that catalogue of video tutorials going back for well over one and a half years. Also bear in mind that I produce a brand new video tutorial every month. You can cancel your donation whatever you want, you can downgrade it, you can upgrade it to a different tier. Now I've also got a companion page which will help you navigate Patreon and locate the information and tutorials that you want to find. I've also got a Facebook group which you gain access to when you become a member. So all you need to do is visit www.patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. I'll see you there. Right, well thank you for watching that, here we go. Right, let's make a start, shall we? Now then, now all the adverts out of the way. <laughs> gotta do it, I gotta do it, because obviously I gotta try and make a living somehow, you know that. Right, I think the first thing we need to do is think about the colors we're gonna be working on. And I think looking at what we've got on the screen here, I'm gonna go for probably, initially just for the lightest color. Let's go for a little bit of raw umber is this one here okay so raw number first I like to start around the top of the head now I always look at the direction that the brush strokes go in there we go especially when it's lighter towards the front as well now obviously I'll be lightening some of this area down later on the thing with painting feathers well you got to really start in the lightest of colors and then gradually build your way to dark. And you've got to look at the direction all these little marks go. I mean, obviously you don't have to paint every single individual mark exactly the same. But to be honest with you, you know, as long as you've got them layered and got the colours roughly about right. And the thing with birds as well is that it depends on the time of the year, depends on their plumage, they do vary a little bit. They really do, especially with certain, you know, particular birds in question. Things like uh, robins can vary and wrens can vary and so on. Especially when it's that time of the year where it's breeding season where the males are very, very brightly coloured. Trying to track the female. I tried that once, didn't work for me. <laughs> I'm going to very lightly just flick out a few odd ones just towards the top of the head. This is um, just an off the cuff video today. Just thought I'll have a live day today, so I've decided to start, take some paint off, to start on Instagram, which is the first time I've ever tried going live on Instagram. Then here, which I've been live on here quite a few times now, on YouTube. And then, after here, I'm going to go, I might do it after dinner actually, after lunch as you would say. I'm going to go to Facebook. Now Facebook, if you remember uh, from my previous videos, if you want to pop on there later on, you're more than welcome to. I haven't got a real set time to be on there live, but I mean, I'll probably aim to be live on there by probably about one o'clock. It could be for maybe half an hour, something like that. Now the Facebook page, if you're interested after this, is going to be, um, just type in the Devon Artist. So the Devon Artist and you find me on there, no problem. Now I'm constantly looking at the directions these all go in. Now these are quite short around here as well. It's all about building up the layers, starting off light, as I said, and working your way darker as you go through the layers. Raw umber is a 
quite a regular colour I use for the for the wrens as well because you've got raw umber, raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber um, just as the main colours within here then I'll mix those colours with just a touch, just a touch of lamp black just to dull it down we could even use um, phthalo blue or something like that if need be which would be fine so I'm just going to see what you can see, make sure you can see everything I can see on there Okay, so we've got that. Hello you two. I've got two, two people watching at the moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit for you. That should hopefully be a little bit better for you. Okay, so we'll try that and see how that looks. So if you've got any questions you want to ask, please feel free. I don't mind at all. As you know, I am a wildlife artist. I've been painting wildlife now for over 40 years, so it's quite a long time I've been doing this. And um, I, I still enjoy every minute of it, I really do. It's when you see a painting start to come to life, you know. For example, I paint the eye first, use the eye first, and then from there on I build out. So the eye, the beak, or if it's a cat or a dog, it could be the eye, then the nose, and then the mouth. But very often just the eye and nose and then the ears on those as well. Just so I can get the main elements in. But when you've got the eye painted on something like this, you've got all this detail work to work on all the way down the body. And when you're working on that detail, you've got something to keep glancing back at. That little bit of life within the eye. Just so you got it there. And that's why I like to paint the eye first. Because it just gives me that... I don't know, that bit of life as I say, and it just puts a smile on your face, it really does. So I'm gradually overlapping these as well. Now I don't want to overload the brush. I want to load this brush up. So what I basically do, I'll try and bring it into the camera shot for you. So bear with me while you see what you can see. So that's what I say to my patrons. So if you want to have a look at something like this, I've got a Ren one, a Ren tutorial, step-by-step -step video on my patreon.com forward slash Devon artist website but I'll show you in this so you're gonna load it you're gonna roll it like so and then you're gonna get a piece of tissue just lightly dab it just take off in a residual paint that way your lines stay a little bit sharper and obviously obviously it depends on the brush as well if you've got a very detailed brush that can make a world of difference it really can if your brush is quite old and worn and it's kind of splaying apart like that you find that uh, yeah it's handy for when you to try and do lots of lines in one go but it can be a bit of a pain when you're trying to work on the finest of details now I don't want to go too far down here because this color does change down there as well I tend to add on the the, the brightest and lightest of colors first as I say because as I go on with the next layer over the top of this you find the layer will dull and down this colour below. But I still want this to show through that little bit, which is the idea. So I'd rather go a little bit too bright on purpose, which then allows me to kind of dull in it down if need be, rather than trying to add on a light colour over the top of a dark colour, which is near on impossibility, unless you've got you know, lifting off paint techniques and so on. Now you can see these are very fine marks I'm making. The brush has just about run out, and because of that, I'm making use of it as well. Okay, let me just see what um, if anybody's got anything to say on there. As I say, you're welcome to post a comment on there if you want to. You're more than welcome. This isn't advertised, this, uh, this live feed. And even if you post comments after it's gone live, and it's back to just kind of general viewing, then please do, because I will respond to it. I do kind of get my emails from YouTube and I do see what people say. And I do try to respond or to reply to just about every comment I can. Depends how many there are, obviously, but um, normally I will do to just about every person. So uh, keep it nice, though, please. Thank you. Such as, what paints do we use? What brush do we use? What paper do we use? So I just want to put some of these lighter, kind of raw sienna, or raw umber actually, and raw sienna, 
mix just towards the front of the chest really because again I want these just to kind of start to bring the detail together a little bit this is just that first layer I tend to add probably two maybe three layers of detail sometimes even more than that depends on the overall effect I want to do it also depends as well if I'm uh, filming for for Patreon because if I'm filming for Patreon which is just down the bottom there you see what I mean um, then I tend to obviously have to think about the length of the video but but normally it's three two three or four layers of detail the more layers that you have the more detail the more full should I say and fluffy in, this, in a bird's case it will feel Okay, so gradually building up is a slow process, but it's an enjoyable one. I'd rather do this like this than try to rush it through with a big brush, you know? Because this way you've got so much control over water. And basically all you're painting with, as you know, is just, just diluted water, isn't it? Just coloured water at the end of the day. Just pop a bit of pigment in the water. Now the consistency of this paint at the moment is milky. So... If you think watery is like it comes out the tap or the faucet, milky really is, has its states milk from, from your carton or your bottle of milk. Then I go to creamy and creamy to me really is kind of a loose, uh, yeah, a loose toothpaste really. Not really thick toothpaste, but loose toothpaste. That's creamy. And then thick is toothpaste. Because people very often ask me as well, you know, why? Uh, how do you describe, how can you describe how, how thick the paint needs to be? I think a lot of it's true through trial and error, you know? So the more times you try and you play with the paints beforehand, then you get to know how they feel and how they perform. And even the brush. I mean, I've been using... This particular brush this morning, which I did on uh, on Instagram, was it that one? No, it wasn't. Apologies. I tell the fib. Hang on, it's this one here. So this particular one is a Winter Newton Series Seven Finest Sable. So it's a nice brush, not the cheapest of brushes. I mean, I can't what this cost me now. It was about five, six pounds, something like that. Um, and it performs quite well. I was quite pleased with it, really. I still prefer my synthetic though rather than sable because you find that the synthetic brushes I find you've got a bit more control over them yes you have also find that there's less water holding properties on sable uh, sorry on synthetic not sable um, but uh, but to me that's not a problem so it means you've got to load it a few a few more times you know to get the detail that you need so you've got to keep reloading it that's fine with me as long as you can control those little brush strokes Right, okay, so that's working my way down. And what I want to do actually, just while that's on there, I'm going to get my size five a minute. And I'm going to very lightly, very lightly, just soften down this detail. I just want to knock it back a little bit and bring a few into the eye stripe or the supercilium. Just a few, because this will kind of set it all in position for when we can add the next layer over the top. That's it, that's better. I'm barely touching the paper when I'm doing this. And again, this is a so size five, nice and soft. This is actually a sable one. It doesn't have to be. Okay, wash your brush out and then back in again and continue with the detail. I'm just going to carry on just a little bit further down. Don't want to go right to the bottom, I'll do that off camera. Just while that dries a little bit. So it shouldn't take too long because it's very warm here today. So the temperature's rising where we are here in North Devon, here in the UK. So the temperature's starting to go up. And uh, yeah. It's good actually because I've got the washing out today so I can actually get the washing dry <laughs> on the rotary. Yes, I know. We all have to have normal lives as well. 
The beauty about doing something like this as well, which I did uh, off camera, is I did the washes for the background because obviously you've got to wait for them to dry, you've got to give it a blast with the hairdryer. Then you've got the noise of the hairdryer on the live camera feed, which is not very good. Um, and all that simply was, was raw sienna, raw umber, and burnt sienna. That's all they use. Oh, put a little bit of burnt umber down there as well. What I tend to do before I start a painting as well, by the way, just out of interest, is that I very often just work on testing the colours first of all and all that simply is something like this lot. So this is what I did to test all the colours out. So I'll be using this colour here which is raw sienna, um, cadmium orange and burnt umber within there. So I'll be using that within the tail and around all the wings here when I start adding all that lovely detail into there. But that will give us some ideas just how I test my colours out to begin with. Test them on some scrap water colour papers the other side of it there. Because at least that way, you got some idea on how it will look before you even go to the main painting. And plus also, <laughs> it reduces the um, the problem we all have when you put a colour on your paper, on your main painting, and it's not right. And it stains the paper. Because as you know, some paints can be staining. So bear that in mind. So it's always wise if you, you know, if you want to, just test out your colours first. Have a play with your colours, even if it takes, it doesn't matter how long it takes, half an hour, an hour, it doesn't really matter. Just take your time and just get your colours right before you make a start on the painting itself, okay? Just really study that photograph. If you've got a photograph on a tablet, or an iPad, or something like that, or on a laptop, computer, <laughs> I don't know, then at least then you can zoom into those pixels, you can really zoom into the detail within that photo. And by doing so, you know, you'll be able to um, pick out the individual colours or some of the main popular colours you can see in there. And do some colour matching. I mean, I will do something like this, for example, to test it. Then I'll add it, kind of I'll offer it next to the photograph on the screen and just see if it's very similar. So just working my way down, gradually. Little tip as well which I do tell my patrons the same thing, my members on Patreon, is cut a hole in a piece of card. Right, and um, we've got one here. Just bear with me a minute. I'm fumbling through my pieces and bop bits and bobs here for a minute. Yeah. So all I mean by that, so bear with me, something like this here, look. So all it simply is, is a little hole cut in a card and you can put that over the top of a photograph I've got two of these, so I can put one over the photograph and one over my painting. And then I can try and match up that colour. So I can try and mix the colour, match up on the watercolour paper here, this scrap piece, or just on a scrap piece next to it. You know, so it's a worth worth doing that. I'll give that a try, just get some scrap watercolour paper or scrap piece of card even. And then just try and match up your colours that way around. Okay, so a few more down there. I'm looking at the shape of this one talking to you because I know this kind of swoops in underneath. One thing I tend to do on most of the paintings before, especially larger paintings than this one there, I'll put a few reference marks in so I can see where the feathers go. Because when you start painting all the detail, even if, even if it's just a first layer like this, then yeah, it's very easy, very easy to kind of lose your way. And um, you end up painting hundreds of lines in the wrong direction. No, I've done it. Believe me, I've done it. You know, and uh, you, you've got to try and repair it then. I think the challenge is to try and repair it, not just to give up on it. Give it a go. Go make yourself a cup of coffee, have a break, come back to it and say, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to sort this out. Just be determined with it. Don't let it get to you. Instead of starting again, Try and fix the one that you've got until it's completely beyond repair. And you think, I'm going to have to start now. But at least give it a go. Now all these fine feathers that come out the back of the bird, the back side of the bird, we'll pull a few little ones out just for now. And then a few more down there. Okay, I'm going to continue down there in a bit. But for now, I'm going to have to go to the top of the head and get some of my, this is burnt umber, cadmium orange and burnt sienna which I'm going to be using and go straight to the top, go 
covered it up. I tend to use a piece of paper in my hand as well, so I don't want to mark the paper. Now, I don't want to put too much of this in because it's quite a rich colour. This is the colour we're using for the tail and for the wings. So I want to put a few little suggestions of this in, just in the top of the head, before going with the, uh, with the darker colour, like the sort of the third layer, if you wish, which I will do. Just a little bit more around there. And probably just below the eye, the eye stripe there, just to the side. Again, I'm looking at the way these go. This is more or less going towards like a, a nine o'clock direction on the clock face. These are going more towards eight o'clock direction. There you go. Put a few odd ones, barely touching the paper now, just towards the front of the head. Okay. Wash your brush out, come back in, and now I'm going to go for a little bit of burnt umber with a touch of lamp black. Okay, so burnt umber with a touch of lamp black. I'm not going for the darkest darks just yet. I want to go add those in once I've got some of this detail in. This is why, because this is obviously quite a small painting. You see the size of my thumb in comparison to that. This is why you need a very, very fine tip to add these tiny details in. More water. Oh, we've got a comment on there. Uh, you are a very awesome watercolor artist. Love your work. Thank you very much. Is that Adrian Saunders? Hello there. How, how are you today? Are you okay? Thank you for watching, by the way. It's very kind of you. I will be going shortly, by the way, because I've been on for ages, haven't I? 22 minutes, but yeah, that's all right, though. Um, right, okay. So it's just an off the cuff video, that's all it is today. Just go for a little bit of live work for a change. Keeps me on my toes. Because as you can imagine, I paint all day, most days, or edit videos, whichever it might be, for Patreon. And because of that, I tend not to get out much. And uh, it's just nice kind of keep you on yourself on your toes by doing a little bit of live work every now and then. Just a bit of fun. So unannounced, so I was on Instagram, this morning as well for about half an hour that's when I started this run so if you go to the Instagram feed if you type in them um, on, on Instagram itself I don't know Instagram that well I'll be honest with you but if you type in the Devon artist you should find me hopefully okay the Devon artist you know where I am it's that bloke there look that's it okay and then you find the, the start of this on Instagram so I thought, I'll come on here for half an hour, do a little bit more on here. This is burnt umber, as I said, and a little bit of lamp black. And then I'll come off here, then this afternoon, probably about one o'clock-ish, something like that. This is UK time, of course. I'll go on to, uh, on to Facebook. And again, just look for the Devon Artist. So the Devon Artist on Facebook, and you find me on there. So hopefully around one o'clock. Doing the same thing, the same bird, the same painting, of course. So that way you'll be able to catch up on what I'm doing and what I'm working on. And how it's all coming together. And you might learn some tips and tricks along the way as well. I'm giving a few little teasers away and ideas away as, a, as I'm painting here for you. Which are the things I teach my patrons, you know, my members on Patreon. So, uh, so if you stay tuned, either here or Facebook, which will be next, as I said, then you'll be able to catch up on some little tips. Now I'm using the brush nearly dry here, nearly dry. I just want to make sure that I've got all the finer details. I said this is like black and burnt umber, but I've got this to a nearly creamy consistency now, so it's actually thickening up a little bit. But that's only because it's been on my palette for a little while. So this is the one in question I'm working with here a lot. So I burnt on bit and there's a little bit of lamp black in that corner, which I'm working with in my little palette there. I could do having two cameras on, because I've got a laptop, I've only got two USB ports, and because of that I can't really, you know. I've tried it with one of those um, USB adapters, which gives you four ports in one, but for some reason it won't see two cameras, it won't see one. So never mind. Otherwise I'd put one on the palette, I did try that once before. It got uh, quite complicated, as you can imagine. 
Right, I'm going to put a few, just a few. I'm going to make sure there's not too much paint on this brush first. No, that's not too bad. Just a few within the uh, the eye stripe or the supercilium. And uh, I've got a little bit around there. A bit lighter there. Just a few, because I'll be adding white over the top of that later on. Come near the end of the painting. So I need something underneath the white so it stands out. Can't have light without dark, can't have light without dark without light, so you definitely need it. Put too much paint on there. Take some off. Remember what I say about your brushes? When you roll it, you load it with paint, you roll it in the palette to a tip, so you kind of roll it around, and then you dab it on some kitchen roll before you come into your painting itself. It's that way you've not overloaded that brush. A little bit more. I will save this video on YouTube as well. So if you're watching this, as I said earlier on, on catch up and it's not live anymore, then it's not a problem at all because you'll find me, uh, you better comment and I'll be able to see your comments, should I say. And as you know, if you know me well enough by now, you know I'm a very honest person, I will reply. As long as I get the notification from YouTube. <laughs> Which I do normally. They know they do normally come through via email, so it's not a problem at all. Now these wrens, we tend to my partner Joe and myself tend to do a lot of nest recording uh, for the for the BTO, British Trust of Ornithology, and we have recorded to date this year ninety seven nests so far, and that means we have to visit the nest every week just to make sure it's safe, make sure there's nothing happened to it. We're very very obviously careful. We are. Um, we have to go by a very strict ruling, the way everything's done. So there's no harm or anything caused towards the birds. But it's all so they can have a account of what's happening in the in the UK of the particular population of birds. So it could be blue tits, it could be great tits, it could be, you know, it could be wrens in this case. So what I have is a very small, very tiny, tiny camera, which I use for wrens nest. Not saying do it. Make sure you go to the BTO for information on how to do nest recording. And this little tiny camera is, is an endoscope, and this plugs into my phone, my mobile phone, my smartphone. But your phone has got to be compatible for it to work. It's got to be OTG or on the go compatibility. So you have to check your smartphone see if it is. And that is a very very tiny lens. It's about as the lens is about as wide. In fact, it's smaller than the tip of this brush, the end of this brush there. It's on a long, very thin lead, and you can just very lightly feed it into where you want it to go, beyond walls or crevices. Really, really handy for for finding out details that you need to find out. Okay, and see, what I'm, see what's happening. Make sure they're all safe and happy. Right, okay. So now you can see this building up. It's starting to build together now, and that's just that one though. It's two layers, really, isn't it? That's another layer of detail on there. No, three layers. We've got the layer underneath, which is a raw sienna. We've got the um, the burnt sienna and cadmium orange. That's right, and a bit of burnt umber, I think it was, for the second layer, and this is just burnt umber for the third layer. I mean, the, the fourth layer will just be the final dark layer. We'll add white over the top of that as well. But yeah, the fourth layer will be the final dark layer, which will be Burn some lamp black again, but more on the black side than the brown side. And then that will add all these fine details in with the tip of this little tiny brush of mine. Just to get that life starting to show. And the shape, which is very, very important as well. Because you've got to make sure you can get the shape right. Right, how long have we been on? Anybody got any ideas? I've got no idea. 29 minutes, right. So if you've got questions to ask, please ask away now, because I'm going to shoot off in a minute and call it uh, call it a day for YouTube. I say I'm going to go to Facebook um, this afternoon, probably about, as I say, that's what time is it, 12 o'clock? Nearly 12 o'clock now, isn't it? So probably about 1 o'clock, I would have thought. A chance for some dinner first. And then uh, come back in nice and refreshed. Eyes refreshed as well. Always, always come away from your painting, by the way. I would take regular breaks. It's amazing how much you'll see things with fresh eyes in a different perspective. You always, that's when I usually come back and see my mistakes I've made and I think, oh no, I missed that. 
because you're always nose to paper sort of thing when you're working with detail. So walking away, making yourself a drink, just be just for 10 minutes, anything like that, and you come back with those fresh eyes and you will hopefully see anything that's not quite right. I say though I'll be on Facebook short well a bit later on, so right, okay. I think from that I'm gonna call it a day. So if you've got any questions to say and you watch this video and it's on catch up, please post below for me. It's not a problem, I will see them later on and uh, I'll catch up with you. If um you got any questions about Patreon itself, uh, which is patreon.com just down the corner there, then as you know you can go on to there as well. Just bear with me a minute. So let's go back to the other camera for you. Well, it's the same camera, actually, to be honest. Don't tell anybody I told you that, though. So, yeah, so you can pop onto Patreon, and uh, if you fancy a go at painting a robin, completely free, no emails exchanged, no nothing, you know, as I said, I'm very honest. I don't want anything off you, anything, nothing, nada, feral. Have a look on Patreon.com, as I say, poor Dash, the Devon artist, and you'll find me on there. And have a look for the robin one. Now, I've provided the, the photograph reference for you and even the outline drawing which you can download so you can have a go at the uh, the Robin tutorial from my little video okay which will give you some ideas on how my videos work on on Patreon as well so I'm not asking you to join I'm just asking you to have a go at the Robin and let me know how you get on I'd love to hear from you okay so until this afternoon until about one o'clock ish I'll uh, hopefully catch you on Facebook as well and uh, I'll see you all again very soon Okay, so until then, I'll say bye-bye for now. Hi, once again, welcome to one of my video tutorials. Now, this time, we're going to be working on a rabbit. Now, the rabbit itself is this one. There we go, all right? And when you look at the photograph as well, you can see that on the photograph, we've got a very bright background. So we're going to replicate that, and that's by just using a, just a small selection of colours. The techniques we'll use is using masking fluid. I'm going to show you exactly how I do that to get the masking fluid on the paper and how to get it off as well. The rabbit itself can be working with wet and wet washes. Also thinking about the shape when we add those washes and the details on. Trying to get the kind of curvature within the painting itself. We've also got the eye to paint as well, trying to get that nice shine within the eye and even a little tiny flower. So come and join me and let's paint this uh, very cute looking rabbit together. And let's get the brushes wet. So you can do it fairly smooth. Once you get the hang of doing something like this as well, you can really kind of whiz off a few fine, fine whiskers.